What's up, YouTube? This is Wesley with the Do It Yourself Mushroom Enthusiasts. This video here is going to be me using the still air box that I showed in the previous video. It's gonna show me injecting some jars. Um, and yeah, just the, the basic steps that I go through when I do anything in the chamber. It pretty much all stays the same. I clean everything with alcohol. Um, first, I clean the whole tub with alcohol. Then I clean each item that's gonna be in there at the time and place it on top of the lid. And then I put the bin over it. And then I wait another 20 to 30 minutes or so. Completely not necessary, but I do it anyway so that any airborne contamination that might be in the air that could have entered the box while closing it will hopefully settle. And then at that point, I grab my UVC light. So I'm wearing two layers of long sleeve shirts. So I'll have long rubber gloves on that I have right here. And I got my dark glasses as well as a face mask off to the side over there so that I am well protected from the UVC. The plastic itself from the container was, will as well protect me a little bit from it. So I don't have to worry about any UVC exposure. Alone. So as I said, I'm just gonna inject a few jars, um, show you guys the steps that I go through. Um, I only wait 20 minutes the one time. And then after that, I just sterilize each next jar, or sanitize, I should say, each next jar with alcohol before entering it and go over it one more quick time real quick with the UVC light, um, anything new that's introduced into there that wasn't in there the first time. And that's all I do. I don't wait 20 minutes between every, in every inoculation or every culture bowl or anything that you would do in a still air box. That would just be a little bit overkill. I already do a little bit of overkill as it is, but I've had problems with contamination when I first started. Um, after I switched companies from the company that I first started with, I've had much better success, but then I still decided to add extra measures even with working with those companies. And ever since then, I haven't had hardly, actually I haven't had any contamination. So here we go. This is gonna be me injecting three jars in my still air box. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate any comments and feedback that you might have, any ideas of stuff you've done. I'm just a do-it-yourself enthusiast. I like to do things myself. I also like to save money. A lot of companies are putting insane markups on these same products that you can make for very cheap. Um, cheaper at Walmart if you go to Walmart for a lot of the plastic bins and things than Amazon, but even Amazon is cheaper as well. So with a little bit of effort, you can accomplish a lot. All right, so step one. First, you wanna clean your whole work surface with 70% alcohol. And you wanna clean it really well. You want the alcohol to be wet for at least 30 seconds to kill off any bacteria or germs or uh, mold spores or anything that might be on the surface. Now, I've already turned off my air conditioner and, or, well, actually it's winter, so I've turned off my heater and my fan because I like to keep air circulating still. And I have a, a air purifying system that has a UV light as well with a HEPA filter, but I turn it off as well because I've always heard that there should be no airflow in the room because it can kick up spores and stuff from other places. So I've turned all those off. It's been well over an hour. Um, and now I'm ready to get started. I've got all my stuff here from a previous video that I was shooting. So I'm gonna clear the table, I'm gonna clean the surface, and I'm gonna clean everything as I put it back on the table or into the bin itself if I plan on using it right away. Then after that, I'll move on to actually inoculating these jars and putting them into incubation. So here we go. Without further ado, I'm going to remove the lid from the bin because it's going to be one of the first things that I put stuff onto after I clean it. I'll probably just put a lot of this stuff inside the bin and then clean it last.
as you can see, it fills up rather quick with the 64 quart clear tote. That's why I recommend going 116 quarts or bigger. That way you have enough room for everything. And I have a couple chairs pushed off to the side that you might not be able to see. That's where I'm placing my stuff. So my table is clear. I'm gonna grab my alcohol and my paper towels. Spray it really well. I mean, you cannot be shy with the alcohol in this process. And just let that set. 30 seconds. I even spray my paper towels a little bit before I wipe down. Just in case, even though I know they're going to get soaked anyways. I don't know why. I'm a freak when it comes to contamination. I had so many problems with contamination when I first started that I've gone overboard with it now, but I don't hardly ever have contamination anymore. Wiping it actually does help keep the surface wet longer as well to ensure that you're killing anything bad on it. And now my table is clean. See how dirty that was? And I clean this every day. It's very dusty in Colorado. All right, now I'm going to spray the lid. By wiping it, it does keep it wet, so you do ensure that you're getting the full 30 seconds. But I also like to let it just set for a second. did very thoroughly wash my hands before I started this video as well. Didn't think it was necessary to show you guys that. So then I will grab my first jar or bag, whatever you're gonna use to inoculate. Really wet, but don't want 
to soak into the patch too much. I'm going to give it a little spritz. Give the whole other side a little spray. to be pearl oysters so that's pretty cool I still sterilize these the outside as well um, even though you claim sterilize the needle I think most people forget that there could be contamination on the outside of the syringe and then you touch it and everything else and contamination gets everywhere that in there and that is pretty much ready to go for the first one but I'm gonna clean these other jars anyways get everything set up to do it all at once for the sake of the video Now we are ready to work. Well, not really. I'm gonna wait 20 minutes, then we're ready to work. I'm gonna put everything over UV light one last time, and then we'll start the first inoculation. See you in 20 minutes. gloves on and my mask. 
I'm gonna clean the gloves really good with alcohol. And I'm even gonna clean the sunglasses because I'm gonna put them down at one point when I use the UVC light and then take them off again and stuff like that. So without further ado, we're gonna get into it. I'm not gonna talk too much because I'm not a whole lot to say. <laughs> Rub it in really good. I guess I can't talk since I'm wearing a mask. So just rub it in really good. Make sure you get everywhere. Like if you were washing your whole forearms and hands. I always forget to take the little protective cover off. Let's leave that up there. Kind of a big deal. even go up the sides of the plastic pan a little bit I mean just clean everything It does have a safety feature, so if you go turn it upside down, it will shut off. Over this one more time. They say if you're within a six inch radius of it, 10 seconds is all you need. And everything in there should definitely be clean now. Sterilize it. 
Now that the light's off, I'll remove my glasses. The torch just gets it really good, really fast. You can use a big lighter. seconds to cool down. If you hear a little sizzle, it's too soon. It will kill your spoilers. More culture. Give it a little squeak. And you'll hear that. And you know you're good to go. There's a self-healing injection port on there. So I'll put it in there. Just enough. To where I can see. And then one to two milliliters. I know I'll kind of squirt it around. And that is it. That is one jar inoculated. Um, I follow all the same steps if I'm pulling a culture. I go right as far as cleaning and everything goes and then going over the light one last time. I even go over the mushroom cap with it um, just to make sure there's nothing on there. And yeah, that is how I pull spores or how I pull culture as well. And that is my still air box. Thank you for watching the do-it-yourself mushroom enthusiast. This is Wesley. Please like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy this content. I will be making more videos in the near future. I'm going to show within a week or two, I'm going to have a video out about an incubation chamber or a spawn box, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, um, and save you about $100 depending on where you buy it from. So watch out for that video. And then uh, shortly after that, a week or two later, I will have my automated shotgun fruiting chamber so that I don't really have to go in there and fan and mist all the time. And to me, going inside the tub just increases the chance of contamination, even though the chance of contamination at that stage is very slim. Um, I still just like to do everything I can to prevent it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm off to bed. I've had a really long day. So we will see you on the next one. Remember, this is Wesley with the do-it-yourself mushroom enthusiasts. And we're going to be doing all kinds of do-it-yourself stuff on here. So you guys have a great day. And I will see you next time. Like, subscribe, and share.